Hiya, and welcome back to this Moon Through the Houses stream series. Happy Freaky Friday, and hiya if you're just tuning in to the live stream. Do say hello if you're a hinster in the live chat, and if you're watching this after the fact, please do leave a comment below. But yeah, first of all, happy Freaky Friday to everyone the day of Venus and Uranus. How's your Friday going? It's raining, it's been raining all day here. And also, how have you found so far the full moon in Aries, which was officially yesterday? So let me know in the comments how things have been for you. You know, I wanna, I wanna share your experiences because October is said to be a very tough month, astrologically speaking. We can't sugarcoat it, okay? But we can come together for conversations like this and talk about our moon, right? Because our moon is the sign of comfort and our deep private selves, who we are deep down. So Haya, if you are coming in just now to the live chat, do say hello. And this is actually part two of the Moon Through the Houses stream series. So if you haven't checked it out yet, you can check out part one, where I talked about the moon in general, and I talked about what the houses are, and then I talked about having the moon in the first, second, and third houses. And in this part, we're going to look at the moon in houses four, five, and six. Okay, so I especially want you to tell me what your moon sign is. So bring your moon sign and tell us what house it's in as well. And also, it would be amazing for you if you had the moon in one of the three houses we're going to talk about today, which is house uh, four, five, and six. So please, please share where your moon is at. And let me just check that my phone is on silent so there's no interruptions. Okay. Yes, we're good. So, oh gosh, I just spilled tea on my laptop. That's grand. <laughs> it is the day of Uranus, Freaky Friday. So it's a good day to spill things. And there's a lot of retrogrades going on. So that's lovely. Um, <laughs> and full moons are, you know, times of spilling over. So let me know if you spill anything recently. <laughs> let me know if you um, you um, blew your top recently. Let me know if you had a, a reaction that was very Aries-like recently. Um, but before we get in, actually, to today's topic of the moon through houses four, five, and six, I would like you to know that if you're a Libra sun, for all of Libra season, I'm offering special five pound sun sign readings. So we meet on Zoom for about half an hour and we talk about your sun sign and any aspects that your sun is making to other planets or points in your birth chart. And it's really fun. Um, if you're a Libra sun, it's for you. Or if you know a Libra, you can get them a nice little gift, but it's only for Libra season. So do drop me an email at queerhaney at gmail.com if you're interested in taking advantage of that. And if you'd like a general reading, you can of course go to hinnyhigh.com or you can follow me on my new Facebook business page, which is Queer Hinny. And I'm also on Twitter. I just joined like yesterday or two days ago. So if you like to tweet, please follow me as well at Hinnylicious. So I'll follow you back as well. And we can, we can natter and tweet every day. Okay. Is there anything else I wanted to announce? Oh yes, there's the astrology conference or the astrology university conference tomorrow, this weekend. So if anyone's interested after the stream, I'm gonna put a link to this conference below in the description because it's free. All you have to do is subscribe and you get free access to like seminars, lectures and panels from like famous astrologers who are just coming and, and, and giving 
free lectures on astrology. That's really cool. So if you have nothing else to do this weekend and you want to learn about astrology, check that out. The Astrology University Conference. Okay. So moon in the fourth house. Let's start with that one. So let me know if you have your moon in the fourth house, especially, and what sign it's in. So now then we are entering the house of your esoteric self. And this is the house also of the deep sense of rootedness, your deep sense of rootedness. And this is also where your heart truly rests, the fourth house. And actually the fourth and the fifth houses are both quite concerned with the heart. Though I feel that the fourth house deals more with the heart in the sense of your privacy uh, or where you're most comfortable. And, and also the fourth house is also often referred to as the house of the home. But to me, this is less about your literal house and more about whether or not you feel at home in that house or that country or that space. So with the moon here natally for you, I kind of read a deep need for you to be comfortable and to feel rooted somehow. Otherwise, learning or perception for you might get blocked or disrupted because you might remember if you watched part one we talked about how the moon is the most receptive sign it's the fastest moving so it's not a sign the most receptive planet it's the fastest moving planet uh, and so it's actually a high marker of your intelligence your emotional intelligence intuitive intelligence but it can get blocked in the fourth house if you're not comfortable or if you're not spiritually rooted, whatever that might mean for you. Um, and perhaps your literal mother is very close to you if you have the moon in the fourth house, or your mother provides you with a deep sense of rootedness. You may have a lot of emotional attachment to or reflection on the past or on nostalgia and even a deep closeness or resonance felt when tracing the patterns and the lines of your familial heritage or of your traditional homeland, maybe. Now, according to the very famous and fabulous cutting edge astrologer, Alice Sparkly Cat, who I will link in the description below as well, like I did with anyone I mentioned in part one, but according to Alice Sparkly Cat, the fourth house is also about what you might take for granted and also what you return to and also destiny. So these themes are also in the fourth house. And so very important for you if your moon is there. Um, so yeah, the, the, the fourth house isn't just then about rootedness or comfort. With your moon in the fourth house, as well, maybe you mm, deeply need meditation. Meditation is a powerful way for you to personally reflect. And also it's how you draw information in and how you learn. Intuition is most potent and learning is best had when you're in that state of calm and comfort, when you're in familiar territory and to go back to the mother, literally, uh, maybe for some of you, this intuition and learning is heightened uh, around or um, from somehow your mother. You may keep also a lot of this received knowledge deep within you, but sometimes might struggle with reflecting it back, um, you know, reflecting it back into the world or you could sometimes re sort of need encouragement and a little push to get you to create and manifest by using what you know deep down and applying it in more like public or open ways. 
already and some examples of famous people who had or have the moon in the fourth house include the artist formerly known as Prince who had it one degrees in Pisces and Robin Williams who had it nine degrees Pisces and Robbie Williams, very similar sounding, but Robbie Williams as well, who has it at 21 degrees Scorpio. And coincidentally, they're all water signs as well. So that's quite interesting. Um, alrighty, let me know if you have the moon in the fourth house and what sign it is in. Hi, if you're just tuning into the live, do drop a comment. Let us know how you're feeling on this freaky Friday. Alrighty, so now we're going to move on to having your moon in the fifth house. So now we swim out of the fourth and into the fifth house. And this is the house often called the house of fun. So with your moon here, you quite likely attract pleasures and entertainment and games and like creative experiences, like it's no effort at all. Perhaps your literal mother as well, because you might remember from part one, we discussed that the moon is often associated with your actual mother. So perhaps your mother was or is some sort of entertainer or just simply full of, they are full of a happy, performative and expressive sort of vibe. And this can also be like a mothering figure. It doesn't have to be literally your biological female parent. It could be like mothering fig uh, figures in general or whoever mothered you most when they brought you up or when you were growing up. And if you have human children, then maybe you're more caring of and attached to them than usual with the moon in the fifth house. Or you're always somehow drawing them in, even if you don't intend to. Maybe you're someone who deep down desires or even feels that they need to have kids. For others, these deep desires and needs are to create and sort of display all the childlike projects and inspirations and dreams that you have within you to sort of publish them um, or to, to perform them on a stage or in front of people and um, also to push out physical productions and anything that you make. And that's a kind of passionate gesture of your heartfelt love for other people, for entertaining other people. So it's similar to the fourth house sense of heart, but in the fifth, we're more like shining it out or sharing it outwardly with others um, or, or somehow joining in fun, putting our heart into something, showing how uh, heartfelt we are. That's kind of more in the fifth house realm of heart themes. But be careful with the moon uh, in the fifth house of drawing in risks, because the fifth house is also associated with risks, gambling, and basically having too much fun. So for some, this might be tricky, because there's also this need with the moon in the fifth house for you to have fun, to create, and to be light and happy. But of course, it's only natural that we will eventually exhaust ourselves or need to retreat back into our fourth house just for a while so that we're not spiritually selling out for some kind of cheap thrill. There might be some people who really, um, <laughs> who really with the moon in the fifth house, they have, they have these kind of like really wild and private ways in which they pleasure themselves. Because the moon is about pleasure, it's about attracting and drawing in, and the fifth house uh, is also about pleasures and pleasing yourself. Um, just, uh, you might even be just the type to unconsciously, with the moon in the fifth house, uh, or otherwise, draw in new people and things and spaces or vibes with, with which you can flirt or have casual dalliances or just 
with whom you can pour out your yearning wilder side. And with your moon in the fifth house, I would say that you possibly should listen to any like intuitions that you get about your human children and or your personal projects and to sort of act on these stirrings and to trust how you're feeling about the kids or the projects uh, and how you're reflecting on these things to trust it. Alrighty. So some examples of people who have their moon in the fifth house include Lady Gaga, who has it 11 degrees uh, in Scorpio. And that I, I'm just thinking now, actually, Lady Gaga has her little monsters. She created years ago, the platform uh, monsters, little monsters, I think it was called, um, which was kind, kind of aimed at her really young LGBTQ plus fan base. Uh, so that's quite interesting moon in the fifth house. Um, Britney Spears also has this 12 degrees Aquarius and RuPaul of RuPaul Drag Race fame has it at 14 degrees of Scorpio, just like Lady Gaga in Scorpio as well. And these are all fixed signs again, coincidentally. Alrighty, so if you have the moon in the fifth house, do let us know. And again, what sign do you have it in? And what's your experience of this really fun and self-pleasing moon? Finally, then, for this part two of our Moon Through the Houses stream series, we meet the sixth house. Now, previously, I used to call this house the house of Miss Virgo because it does seem to give us themes that represent uh, a sort of spiritual health checkup um, in our birth chart. But the sixth house isn't exactly the same as Virgo. There's just some like overlaps. But with your moon here in the sixth house, you are likely to be a responsible person when it comes to your health. Uh, or health, you know, this is because health is a sixth house theme. Maybe also your literal mother is very health conscious or very good at solving problems. With the moon here, I've seen people be highly responsive when they're at work since the sixth house deals with work and jobs and like all the shiz that we don't want to do, but we have to do. And, and these people I've found are also good with their routines. They're really good with their routines, even though they might sometimes be moody and reactive towards these routines. And some of you might even need your routines because the moon does deal with like neediness and attachment. And some of you might be too attached to routine or you somehow deeply desire to be healthy and more functional. So the moon does deal with our true deep desires as well. There could be lots of reflection for you when it comes to health, when the moon is in the sixth house, or when it comes to work and fulfilling everyday tasks. And there's a lot of intelligence about how you deal with these themes. Now, when you're at work, if you do have like an actual workplace and you have um, colleagues, do be careful of a strong tendency to mother your colleagues or to get too attached to them. Because not everyone takes kindly to that sort of mothering energy. Um, or you might just end up like hurting, uh, hurting yourself, basically getting hurt by putting in way too much when you need to just sometimes like view some of your jobs as more literal um, detached matters. At the same time, having the moon in the sixth house, of course, is gonna give you, I feel, great intuition when it comes to your colleagues, when it comes to your boss or your customers and so on. More generally, having the moon here gives you the individual um, a sort of drawing in power, bringing you lots of jobs lots of work and lots of tasks. So do um, be careful 
if you're the type to say yes to everything and to take work on because your moon is only going to keep pulling in more things for you to do and more problems to be solved. So if this applies to you, then think about how to set sensible boundaries if you feel like you're pulling in too much. Alrighty. So that's going to conclude part two of this Moon Through the Houses stream series. Thank you very much if you, um, if you came to the live stream. Um, do leave a comment uh, with your moon sign, what house it's in, and how you, you know, what's your take of your moon? And do you feel really close to your moon? Do you relate to your moon placement? And finally, just before I go, again, another reminder, if you are a Libra sun, I'm offering very, 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 very discounted five pound. It's about five and a half dollars, five pound Libra sun sign readings all Libra season just for Libra suns and we talk about your sun in the birth chart for about 30 minutes on zoom and any aspects that your sun is making to other planets or points in the birth chart and also what Libra season means for you in this year of 2020 or maybe you're not a Libra sun and maybe you would like to buy for a friend family member or a partner it's a very nice little gift. If you'd like a general birth chart reading for yourself or any other type of service that I can offer you, you can go to queerhinny um, at gmail.com and drop me an email. Let me know what you would like. Or you can go to hinnyhigh.com and check out my services there. And again, I'm on Facebook now. My Facebook page is Queer Hinny, Queer Hinny. So if you're on Facebook, do go and follow me. And if you're on Twitter, follow me at Hinnyalicious. And if you haven't already and you like my content, please subscribe and give the video, these streams, a thumb up and leave a comment. I really want to know, like, where your moon is at, okay, in what house, in what sign, and how you actually relate to it. Alrighty, I'll see you in the next part, part three of this Moon Through the Houses stream series where we will be talking about houses seven, eight, and nine. So have a lovely rest of your freaky Friday and I will see you next time. Take care, all the best of wishes always. Mwah.